welcome to our webinar where we are uh, going and making today's trip to Saxony, Germany, actually. Uh, my name is Tina Kivikas. I'm the export advisor at Enterprise Estonia, and I have uh, done this work since already eight years. And pretty often during this eight years, uh, I have received the questions from our Estonian companies and clients. I would like to establish a new game, a new uh, company in Germany. Uh, and can you help me? So my answer always, 100% is where? Where would you like to do it? Because the Germany is big. We have 16 states. Have you ever considered where? And often, of course, the companies have already considered and then we can go step by step forward. So the idea to organize this kind of webinar came not only from my side and from my experiences, but also from uh, um, Mrs. Sonia Hantoma, who is going to speak today as well, and with whom together we are organizing this webinar. So I would give you the floor now, Sonia, and introduce yourself as well. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, everyone who is here and um, being so interested in, in what Saxony Germany is all about. Um, my name is Sonia, as Tina said. I'm working for Telescope Effect. And um, actually, I'm not going to tell you too much about myself and Telescope Effect. At this point, I can tell you that we just opened the first um, showroom in Germany that is um, very similar or looking up to the briefing center in Tallinn. So we just opened the DE Estonia showroom in Midweida last week. And that kind of gives you a little flavor of how connected we are to Estonia. And I will certainly get into that in more detail later when it's my turn. But um, yeah, before we start, actually, I was thinking, um, it would be very interesting uh, to use the chat function and to get to know you a little bit. So um, Herr Lippert and um, Frau Kivikas and Herr Mora and Herr Pongratz and I know uh, where you're from or what your interests are. And I encourage you to just type into the chat, um, maybe if you have been to Germany already and if you have been to Germany, it doesn't matter personally or for business, where you went. It will be very interesting to us to know if you actually have been to Saxony before. Thank you, Sonia. So uh, you mentioned already we have here panelists. Uh, uh, Mr. Andreas Lippert, hello. He's uh, from the Saxon Economic Development Corporation and also Hendrik Mora from Termori. Hello. Uh, you are going to uh, hear from those old people uh, um, a little bit longer presentation and we have enough time to the questions and answers. We also collected uh, your questions as you signed up yourself to this webinar. We collected already questions, so I will read them also at the end of our webinar. And hopefully we can then discuss and have answers because entering German market is not so easy, but it is of course possible. The, otherwise we would not organize such an event. Uh, but before we are, I'm going to show you our agenda, uh, we have a greeting actually organized by uh, Mrs. Han Thoma from our uh, Honorary Consul of Estonia in Leipzig, Mr. Mark Aretz. And we taped it four way already a couple of days ago, as I met Mr. Aretz in Mitweida last week. Um, I was uh, pretty much impressed and I directly asked him, what's your personal goals? What would you like to reach as a honorary consul of uh, Estonia in Leipzig? And he actually said, my personal goal is to bring Estonia more closer to Saxony people. So let him do it. And uh, therefore I'm encourage, uh, encouraging you after the webinar or whenever you take to take a step to uh, close to Saxony or in entering the market, take contact also with Mr. Aretz. He will, he is waiting after it. Now I will ask my assistant, Mari, uh, hopefully you are there, to take over the screen and play his greeting. Austed webinaaril osalejad. Tervitan teid kõigi tänasel virtuaalsel seminaaril ning loodan, et see saab olema põnev ja harif. 
Olen alates ilmisestä aastast määrtud Eesti aukonsuuliks Saksi, Tyringi ja Saksi Anhalti Liidumaadel. Seetõttu kasutan ma juhust ja tervitan teid ka teie tänase virtuaalse külastuse puhul Saksimaal. If you don't mind, I will now continue in English for the benefit of all participants, but admittedly also in my own interest. One of my goals as honorary consul is to promote the economic activities of Estonian companies in Saxony, Thuringia and Saxony-Anhalt. Framework conditions here in our region are excellent. Until the Second World War, Central Germany was traditionally one of the economically and most successful locations in Germany and has always been characterized by inventiveness, entrepreneurship, and high productivity. Admittedly, this was suppressed and run down during 40 years of communist planned economy, but after liberation from the socialist dictatorship, it became apparent that the potentials could not be extinguished. With reunification, a rapid transformation process has begun in the region. This is not the only striking parallel to Estonia's development since the end of the occupation. Just like Estonia, Saxon in particular has freely developed its traditionally strong regional identity, which has grown over centuries as a re-emerged German federal state in the last 30 years. Today, the central German states are the economically most dynamic region of the former GDR. One legacy from the GDR era are the traditionally good economic relations with the regions behind the Iron Curtain, including Estonia, which were developed during the Cold War and still exist today. Within my country, Central Germany has one of the most successful and demanding educational landscapes. Investors from Estonia therefore meet an above average, well-educated and highly motivated workforce here. From my point of view, as an Estonian honorary consul, all those involved deserve great appreciation, especially for the organization of this event. But as I said before, it's no coincidence that Telescope Effect was created here. Our region and Estonia simply fit together. Thank you. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Aretz. I will uh, send my greetings to him uh, later on. Uh, as I'm now trying to show you ag agenda, can you can you see it? Can someone con say to me if, if you can see my agenda? Right now, no. Right Not now, right no. Now. Okay, thank you. Then I will go back again and try to share screen. We all have to learn. Now it works. Yep. So good. As, a, as I said, the, the um, greeting from uh, Mr. Mark Aretz uh, was specially um, taped for you. And uh, thank you, Sonia, for helping me with this greeting. And as I said, uh, he really waits uh, that the Estonian companies will take contact with him if they have any questions uh, regarding Saxony. And then we now, uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Lippert, we will uh, start with you. Afterwards, uh, Sonia will take the word and at the end, Mr. Mora. But I would like to uh, really, uh, as, as Sonia already said, write your questions and answers or in the chat, uh, write messages uh, for us because I, I would really like to answer to every question, even when our time runs out, we will do it later on via email or I take personally contact with you or uh, Mr. Lippert will answer or Hendrik will answer. We will do it for sure. Good. Mr. Lippert, I yeah. get the floor is yours. I'm happy to use this floor and dear audience, um, dear guests from Estonia, but also uh, within Germany, um, thank you, Tina, for organizing and also Mr. Ms. Han Thoma for organizing the stage for um, today's discussion. Mr. Aretz uh, did already my job. Um, he said that uh, Estonia and Saxony fit quite well together. And I uh, tried to yeah, add some more detail maybe to this fitting and to this good connection. 
um, with a brief presentation about our uh, federal state of Saxony. Um, he mentioned already Germany consists of 16 federal states. Um, we are one, um, one party of, of that uh, federal union, but a special one. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Kivikas, Tina, could you share the, the presentation? And this is kind of typical, maybe also for our relation. Uh, it's um, the small but very um, yeah, highly developed country of Estonia that uh, leads through the technicals, technical ups and downs. Um, so Ms. Kivikas helps me with the presentation today. So let's start and have a, a close look into Saxony. with the next one. You may, uh, may find it impolite on the next uh, map that uh, Estonia is not displayed here, um, but at least you can see Saxony, our region that lies uh, south of Berlin uh, with only a one and a half hour train connection to the new Berlin airport and with close connections to the booming centers of the east. Uh, may it be Prague, um, one and a half hour car ride from the, uh, our capital city, Dresden, and also to Wroclaw, um, a two and a half to three hour car ride from, from Dresden. And we are also well connected with the um, Western city centers in Germany. And one special um, logistic competence that we have is um, with Leipzig, um, is, it's the cargo hub of DHL within Europe. Um, DHL runs three main cargo hubs in the world, one in the US uh, and one in Shanghai and one in Europe. This is Leipzig and Leipzig has become one of the most important cargo um, airports in, in Germany besides uh, Frankfurt. And what you can also see on the map is uh, Midweida, um, the Estonian hub, uh, as we call it. And Ms. Antoma already explained something about it and will later uh, continue this. It, it lies right in the middle uh, between the city centers, Dresden, Chemnitz, and Leipzig. Um, we have Midweida very well connected um, to these um, city centers with all infrastructures needed for doing a successful business. Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, yeah, we can skip this one. That's our mission. Your project is also our support. Um, and let me spend one phrase about that. Um, the Saxony Economic Development Corporation is a state-owned organization. Um, we uh, have um, 55 people in our ranks um, that really look after the needs of companies that want to establish here uh, in Saxony, but also uh, we look after the companies in Saxony already that want to go abroad. Elon Musk recently stated that Germany rocks. Uh, when he talked about his Gigafab, um, he's going to build up in Germany, not far away from Saxony. And just to, to keep in mind um, that Saxony is part of that uh, economic powerhouse, Germany. Um, well, Germany is Europe's largest market. It has most stable labor costs, and which is, I think, also a very important aspect for Estonian companies, a very um, big labor force that is also very well educated, especially in the nature science and engineering science subjects. And we were happy to see that uh, we have now also a new honorary consul from Estonia that uh, who is, yeah, whose agenda it is also to um, um, further and promote this connection to Estonia. Okay. Um, I think, uh, Tina, we will forward also the presentation to the, to the participants after, after the meeting. Um, so let me pick out um, two or three aspects that might not be uh, known to you already. Um, when we think about Germany, um, of course, topics such as Autobahn or the, the big car makers are a big topic. Uh, not many people know that um, the production powerhouse for uh, vehicles lies in Saxony. And now with the um, transformation to electric vehicles, this shift has become stronger. Um, every fourth in Europe produced electric car comes from Saxony. This is due to the fact that uh, Volkswagen transformed his, its major production plant in Zwickau into a pure electric vehicle production. 
what makes it special as well is the strong competence um, in uh, the field of nature science and engineering science with our excellent universities and um, um, universities of applied science, such as Midweida, Chemnitz, and also Dresden. Okay. Um, this is to give you a, a brief overview about the possibilities and tools um, that we have to support also foreign investments here in Saxony. Of course, there's the possibility of financial assistance for investments. So grants, or as we call it, incentives uh, that companies can achieve and acquire when they uh, settle down in Saxony. This is uh, um, um, conditioned by the factors of the size of the company who is going to settle, um, but also on the particular area where the company is going to settle. Uh, in areas that are, let's, let's call not so highly developed, such as Leipzig and Dresden, the capital cities, um, um, for example, bordering to Poland, there you can acquire a higher incentive rate um, than, for example, if you settle in uh, Chemnitz or Leipzig. Um, besides the direct incentives, there are also loans. So you have the possibility to... Um, acquire attractive loans from our Saxony Economic Development Bank. And once you're here, um, Saxony is said to have a very innovative program for research and development incentives. So once you want to develop a new product, for example, with a working group at the university, you can acquire incentives for this program as well, or taken as another example, want to set up a pilot line to scale up your idea that you have developed in your lab and want to industrialize this product with a production line, you can set up this pilot line here in Saxony and get it uh, very well funded for this. And especially um, in the topic of acquisition of labor, um, our system in Germany is quite competitive. We have the um, Bundesagentur für Arbeit, our employment agency, which really looks after the acquisition process. Um, for example, you need um, 50 persons that are qualified in battery setting up battery management systems, uh, and you need to qualify them before you hire them. Um, our labor agency looks after the process and pays most of the process as well. Just to give you an idea about the investment environment um, that we set up in Saxony. Okay, we can continue. Okay, further on. Um, to give you a broader picture about the industry structure of Saxony, um, Saxony is proud to have five major industrial branches. Of course, the automotive branch is our biggest, um, but then also we have a long tradition in mechanical engineering. Many companies that have settled here in Saxony it's the topic of life sciences with the center of uh, where the center has formed out in Leipzig and uh, in Dresden. Um, we have the, the, the industry of uh, environmental science and um, of course, as well, microelectronics. It's a shame that I named it at the, at the last um, because microelectronics is really um, a big asset for our region. Um, you've seen it on the news that there was a shortage for chips and um, sensors. Um, the big car producers couldn't produce because there was a shortage of chips. And Saxony is Europe's biggest cluster for the chip production. Um, big companies such as Global Foundries and Infineon, um, they have their fabs here in Dresden. And it's also called the Silicon Saxony. So it's a big statement. And... Uh, uh, huge ecosystem has formed around um, this branch here. Just to give you a number, in, in this Silicon Saxony, so this major region uh, around Dresden, uh, about 70,000 people work uh, in this cluster of microelectronics in Saxony. And of course here displayed, um, we call it Autoland Saxony, the automotive industry uh, with a very strong foothold here. And this uh, branch has seen a major shift in the recent years. So all the big 
car producers, Volkswagen, BMW, Porsche, they have invested, invested massively to um, transform their production plants into e-vehicle production plants. We can continue, Tina. That's a map. Sometimes this gives a bit help um, to identify uh, and localize um, what has been said before. Um, we have Leipzig, um, Chemnitz and Dresden, and right in the middle, I'm sorry that I didn't display it here with Weida, uh, right at the heart um, of our country and federal state. So from it Weida, you can easily reach uh, within one hour Leipzig, Chemnitz, and also Dresden, where all these major players have settled down. Okay. Okay. It's a bit may, may sound a bit arrogant. Um, Saxony has got the brightest minds. Um, I wouldn't go so far, but um, if you uh, have a look, close look on uh, rankings or examinations about the, uh, the education landscape, it's true that Saxony uh, has been ranking first for the last 15 years um, in the comparison of the education systems in, in, in Germany. So we, we mentioned at the beginning, 16 federal states, they all have their educational system and Saxony has ranked um, first um, for the last 15 years. So there must be something good with it. And um, particularly important for Estonian investors, English is our first foreign language. Um, and there's also very strong uh, infrastructure in form of kindergarten and childcare when it comes to uh, bridge the gap between the infant and the school time. Okay. And what makes it special as well, also in the comparison to other European countries, there's no other region where you have such a high qualification quota, means that 95% uh, of our working population have at least a vocational training or university um, access degree. This is very high also in the international and European comparison. So you can really rely on a strong basis of qualified labor in our region. Okay. Well, this is a nice map with a lot of uh, dots and triangles and circles, but it shall display that there's a high density of uh, research and um, university institutions throughout Saxony, not only in Chemnitz, Dresden, and Leipzig, but also in, in smaller towns such as Riesa, Mittweida, um, Bautzen, they are all educational institutions. And um, just to give you another number, Saxony educates more than 6,000 natural scientists, so-called engineers per year. It's a strong base and Saxony has become very popular also for young people from other places internationally, but also within Germany um, uh, that come to Saxony, study here, and also stay here. Okay. Um, a map from the European Union that ranks uh, European innovation leaders. That means this is a region, Saxony is a region that invests heavily into research and development, and where also the small companies, the SMEs, invest heavily uh, in research and development. Usually it's, it's, it's a topic for the big players. Uh, they have their big research and development departments. That's still true. Uh, but what is uncommon but happening in Saxony is that also the small ones, the SMEs are investing in research and development. And this is an yeah, example for uh, our uh, investment policy in Saxony that the state also supports these small SMEs to um, yeah, undertake their research in their own companies and develop innovative, innovative products in the end. Okay. It's all about numbers as well uh, and important for investors um, to know the numbers they can rely on. Um, six universities we have in Saxony and maybe that's also interesting for you a number of more than 100,000 students uh, that study currently in Saxony. Okay, um, it's, it's been, I think the CEO of Global Foundries who stated, um, it's all about people. When they uh, had to explain why they invested in Saxony, 
and that's really true. I think we are proud to, to have such an ambitious and and hardworking uh, uh, labor um, population in, in Saxony. Some interesting figures and facts. Um, uh, if if we compare uh, our labor market with other regions, we uh, were happily to, to state that um, Saxons, for example, um, do not uh, so often change their jobs. That makes it very reliable also for employers. Uh, once they have uh, taken on board qualified labor, um, they can uh, be assured that they have a very loyal workforce in Saxony and uh, which makes it special as well. Saxony is an area in Germany where most of the populations still are willing to work full time. So if you have an ambitious project, um, you'll find also an ambitious labor force here. Interesting to know maybe also for international staff, um, there are international schools in Leipzig and Dresden, international kindergartens. So there has developed also an international infrastructure where you can also acquire high level um, staff um, for whom it is very important to educate their kids also in these institutions. Okay. And to give you a brief outlook, um, I know that this is not the typical starting point for an Estonian or any other European company, um, but once you have settled here and need space to grow, there are sites with which you can compete also with your competitors. And um, we can skip to the other one. This is a picture from BioCity in Leipzig, but this is a picture of um, an industrial site in Berbersdorf. I think uh, not, not even half an hour away from it wider. We have this industrial zone with a ready-made plot um, of more than 70 hectares, um, ready-made for investors um, to start with a good connection directly linked with the A4, the highway that connects uh, Hof, Nürnberg, the Munich with Dresden. And not far away from Dresden as well. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I hope uh, that was a good overview about our lo business location with some facts and figures um, that hopefully made you a bit more curious uh, to learn more about it. Thanks for the patience and um, yeah, for listening. Thank you. I will uh, let the site uh, right now open the people if, if people would like to know, take a picture or note. We will send also the presentation afterwards to all the participants. Mr. Lippert, I have a question to you. Um, just a simple question, but might be you can answer directly. If you would like to find marketing databases, uh, the company databases or information databases about Saxony or overview about Saxon's industry, structure and activities and news, where, where should you look after all? Well, of course, we run such a database on our own website. Um, you can find it under business-saxony.com. Um, there's a database not only on the industrial lots that we um, try to marketize, but also a database on the Saxon companies. You can structure your search um, with the several branches, for example, in the field of mechanical engineering, uh, you can define the particular area uh, in Saxony where you are uh, searching for industrial or business partners. And then the database gives you more information about all the companies in Saxony. So business-saxony.com should give you a good overview. And if there are more detailed questions, well, don't hesitate to contact me. Good. I, I think I, I already looked after this site, but it was like a, a year and a half ago. I got the question from one Estonian company, if I can find out in Saxony the companies who are importing or exporting, um, doing activities import and export uh, with Estonia. And I got the list of 220 companies, something like that. But it was a couple of years ago. So I guess it's a good database. You can uh, find there what you, you need. Yeah. And if it's not there on the first site or look, then please use the offer and contact us. I think we can then also assist with a further search. You mentioned in your presentation also that you are uh, promoting research, development, technology and innovation and such kind of projects like a pilot projects. Um, what's your personal opinion is about it? Uh, if I have uh, some 
very good, interesting solution, but I can't uh, do the research in Estonia. Would it be then possibility to, to contact directly with you or how it's process going? Is it like a very bureaucratic? Um, I think um, it's not very bureaucratic, but you need um, a good first contact. I think we can be such a first good contact because depending on the stage of the product development, then uh, we would either choose a path for commercializing or for further research. Um, for commercializing, you need us as a partner because you need a space, you need a GmbH. Um, but if it's a bit before that, uh, if there's still research needed, uh, then we connect with the university or uh, a startup hub and where the, the, the idea can be further developed or technically also advanced uh, within the university. But the universities these days are very open um, to this. They have all created um, special incubator spaces. And there are several examples where young companies have come to, to Dresden or Leipzig or Saxony with Vida as well um, to further develop their idea. Just recently, uh, we had contact with a New Zealand startup. It was also on the news. It's called Power On. They have um, developed the starting point for a very um, yeah, interesting technique uh, in the field of robotics. But they have settled here in Dresden to further um, develop this technique and this product. And they have formed a GmbH here as well. So it seems possible. And there are many examples that show that doing um, business or starting such a um, innovative business are possible here. And from my personal experience, uh, although this is Germany or this is so-called Western Europe, and um, here you can always find people who are open to, to your idea. Um, I think uh, in Midweida, Ms. Antoma, uh, she in person is an example for that, but also here in, in Dresden and Leipzig, you will always find people who are enthusiastic about um, building up something. So there is still such an uh, appetite for doing more. That's very nice. That's very nice. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm stopping now the screen sharing with your presentation. And I would like now to give a word to Mrs. Sonia Hantoma. Uh, can you show your presentation yourself? And just going and jumping to the next point, please. So, all right, I had problems with my audio for a second, but uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Lippert, for that very interesting uh, over overview of uh, Saxony. I will. Uh, dive a little bit deeper into Midweida uh, specifically. I guess I went a little bit fast uh, through my first slide. Um, I'm representing Telescope Effect and we are a company situated in Midweida. So Midweida has around 16,000 residents and is uh, in the heart of the state of Saxony. And as we have heard already, um, we are located in middle Saxony and uh, here you, you can see a little, I, I don't know, I see, hope you can see my little cursor here. This is uh, the blue area is considered Middle Saxony. And the, the big uh, map here um, at the lower part shows you again, um, all the networks and institutions and um, organizations we have that will actually help you in whatever line of business you are. Halibat said that we are, well connected and that we have a do it startup mentality. And these are different centers, different places throughout Saxony in generally that really will support you in whatever your endeavors are. Uh, Middle Saxony itself is around uh, 21 cities, 32 municipalities, and it's, it's really quite scenic also. I think we've heard about all these business opportunities, but um, you know, if you wanna settle somewhere, if you wanna go somewhere, it's also important that, that you like the area. And it is a very beautiful area. Um, we have castles and we have lots of cycling passes. There's a water reservoir uh, called Kriebstein. And it's also interesting to know that um, we are a century old mining industry. So we're not doing mining anymore now. Um, 
but there were old coal mines, especially here around Leipzig. They took the old coal mines and flooded them with water. So we have lots of artificial lakes and the landscape is quite nice in Saxony overall, and especially around the Midweida area. So um, building bridges, that's important to us today. That's why we have this event today. As we said, as we have seen this map, I guess we, we uh, people from Saxony are very proud of this map, you know, showing again that we are quite in the in the heart of Europe um, and Midweida is in the heart of Saxony and therefore we see Midweida and Saxony in general as a bridge to Germany. We have strong research power, strong economic power, strong German Mittelstand, a word, Deutscher Mittelstand, a lot of you probably have heard uh, also in, in German just, strong network of financial institutions, especially our mother company is uh, the Volksbank of Midweida and a big player in the Genossenschaftliche Finanzgruppe in Germany. We have connection to innovation specialists, strong historical ties, and we also believe that we do share uh, the same innovative uh, mindset. We have um, firsthand insights into best practices of digitization. We have a strong startup mentality close networks with fintechs and digital pioneers from Estonia, innovation transfer, market access and collaboration, which are all very valuable and important points, we believe, <coughs> for um, businesses that come from different countries and are interested in setting up their business uh, in a certain area. So maybe a little bit more about our specific ecosystem. As I said before, um, we are 100% daughter of the Volksbank Midweida. And Midweida in general is considered a digital university region. We have an endowed professorship actually with this University of Applied Science in Midweida. One of our CEOs holds a professorship at the University of Applied Sciences for e-entrepreneurship at the University of Applied Sciences. As I mentioned before, lots of transition, transitional areas, stepping out of the coal mining business. So, so what do we do with a business? What can we do? How can we build up? And um, we as Volksbank Midweida and um, Teleskop Effect have done lots of exploring and thinking. There were experienced journeys to Soup in Switzerland, to Malmö in Sweden, and we were kind of brainstorming and thinking what other transitional areas are doing and, and how we can further strengthen our area in Midweida. In 2019, we had a big international conference uh, in Midweida, a human conference, where we were talking about digitization and the progress of it and how it actually affects your personal and your business life. I'll go into the human conference uh, a little bit more to a later point. But at the human conference, the CEOs decided that the ties we, we loosely had at that point with Estonia, um, we should tighten, strengthen. And an LOE was actually signed that evening that uh, we would expand that business and that we would build that bridge and make it even stronger. And that we would bring certain aspects of digitization and progress and innovative ideas from Estonia to Germany, specifically to Midweida. So we do have a strong international network. A lot of these things I've said all take place in the Werkbank 32, which is our innovation center for digitization in Midweida. It is run by Teleskop Effect and also supported by the Volksbank of Midweida. So next to talking about digitization, we have think tanks there, and moreover, different seminars and, and really consulting as well for businesses, startups, and small, as well as medium-sized companies. But we're also very much known in Midweida for the blockchain showcase region. I show you a little bit more about that. So Midweida indeed is the blockchain showcase region in Germany. So uh, I guess, I didn't expect that at first when, when I started working in Midweida and uh, maybe you should also know that when you live in, in, in Germany, of course, not everybody knows right away where Midweida is, but once you hear about it and then you see and hear these ties there are, 
you're really quite uh, surprised for an area with only 16,000 people. So having the blockchain region of Germany in mid -Ida, that's quite something. And this blockchain region is really focusing on various blockchain applications and to really kind of explain and, and make blockchain more tangible. That follows into areas such as, of course, academia, but also in the broad competences, of course, in uh, DL token emission, but also in uh, digital document management, mobility, and um, overall social interaction between citizens and companies in the region that promote blockchain and applicable project visits. So if you are interested in blockchain or would like to have um, more information concerning that field, please do not hesitate uh, to contact me afterwards as well. And I will make sure that I will connect you with the people in our area that are really focused uh, on this topic in particular. So I mentioned before, we are a digital university region. In fact, uh, in Midweida, we have the largest university of applied sciences in Saxony. And uh, we, we like to say we're truly international. So there are, I guess, 25% of all the students from abroad and from 40 different countries. And most recently, uh, the Erasmus program with uh, Taltech University was actually established uh, at the University of Applied Science. So we, of course, are hoping for an eager exchange between the universities and also to foster the student exchange and strengthen the network we have built so far even further. The important institutes, the Laser Institute, uh, we really have one of the most modern TV studios. Um, we had uh, government visitors from Paldiski here last year, actually. And uh, I remember uh, him, the mayor, being in the, in the recording studio. It was around Christmas time, and he was uh, recording in Estonian language some Christmas greetings. So that was, that was fun, and, and it, had, uh, it got nice comments as well from the people that were actually uh, listening to the radio station. We have the Saxon Institute for Computational Intelligence and Machine Learning, and as I mentioned, the Blockchain Competence Center. We do have famous graduates. Um, well, I like to refer to Hans Basen as one of my favorites because I like the cookies. So the Estonian friends that are watching, my question always is, do you know the cookies? The answer always is, no, I've never seen these cookies. So I'm not doing any commercials, but I do have these here. And I'm pretty sure that you have seen these cookies because I know they are sold in Estonia as well. Uh, August Hoyt, uh, founder of Automotive Giant, uh, Audi, for example, definitely well known. And uh, Friedrich Opel, also uh, Opel AG, also automotive uh, industry. As Herr Lippert also referred to, we do have a very strong automotive industry in Saxony. But um, we also have, of course, uh, hold on, where is he? Maybe I took him out here. Oh, General Electric, there he is. Gerhard Neumann, president of General Electric, I, I think is uh, quite interesting. And of course, Bernhard Schmidt to the Estonians. He was a, a scientist who was born um, in NISA, but uh, studied and worked in Midweida. And he is the developer of the reflector telescope. And maybe, I leave this up to you at this point, you make the connection already, reflector telescope and telescope effect, there could be some connection there again. So we at Telescope Effect believe that digitization is changing our world and um, that it is a fundamental transformation for our society, that it enables completely new business models and we are really willing to, to take them on, to develop them further, to look into them and, and have fruitful corporations as well in order to strengthen our region and in order to really like give impulses to our region to make us stronger and to make us more competitive in the future. As you can see, um, we have very strong partnerships. Again, for Midweida in the heart of Saxony, 16,000 people, when you look at these partners we have and we do joint projects with and I'm aware that, that you are aware that uh, they are in all kinds of different uh, business fields. 
So of course there are connections to blockchain, but it goes much more beyond than, than that. Innovation Centrum for Industry 4.0, of course, um, Nortal, uh, all of you know, T-Systems, Child. It, it's a lot of um, international impulses we also get from our partners and ideas we work together on and develop further. Our topics at Telescope Effect are divided into four fields, whereas the startup hub, um, Mittelstand Digital, yeah, so German word Mittelstand again, SMEs, digital and bank innovative are the most prominent um, topics in our company. We strengthen the different fields through workshops and seminars. A lot of times they are actually individualized and we're trying to help our customers to really have a look out that makes them fit for the future. The think cross approach is basically like an umbrella above everything. It's a cross industry innovation approach in order to really bring things, bring ideas and, and the way of doing together from all different kinds of industries in order to, to not start at the get go every time, but really connect the fine line, connect the dots and make the most out of it basically to learn from each other. Specifically, I wanted to share with you um, the, the track of uh, well, our business field, the startup field, because I personally think that it might be interesting for a lot of Estonian companies that are interested in, in, in joining the, the German market. And it's important to know that we do have a specific business field just for startup, for German startups. We are supporting our local startups but of course we do have that connection to fintechs as well, given the fact that our mother company is uh, one of the most innovative and profitable banks in Germany. So we do have also a very strong connection to fintechs as well. Um, you see here Wechselgott and Tinker Toys. Those are two very successful startups in Germany that we were uh, happy to support and, and, and help them develop uh, so fruitfully on the German market, actually. So I talked about Backbank 32. This is where all the magic and all of what we do kind of happens. Um, you see some pictures here. We have three, actually, at the moment, we have two buildings that belong to the complex of Backbank 32. Um, the Wäscherei, the Villa, and the Werkstatt. The Werkstatt, the futuristic building at the bottom, is something we're planning uh, in the future. It's, it's not built as of now, and we're still thinking of how to best utilize um, this field, actually. But uh, the Wäscherei, we opened last year. Um, basically, it was, it was a partial opening of that building where we do host our startups, where we have a co-working area and where we um, work with a digitization laboratory where um, specialists uh, educate teachers actually on what technology they can utilize in the classroom. I'm saying we partially opened it because we were of course still hoping, hoping that we could have a big opening, but due to the pandemic, we had to limit the guests we could invite and Everything was a bit more limited than we wanted, but we didn't really want to wait and we did want to have that official kickoff and really start the work in that big building, which I call the heart actually of Werkbank 32. And if you wonder the name Werkbank 32, it's a German word, Werk, Werk means to work. You work the workbench, the actual working, the actual working with your hands and shaping and making and being innovative and also doing prototyping. And the 32 is really just a house number because we're located on Bahnhofstraße 32. So, and then the villa uh, is the building you see to the right. So at the, not the bottom floor, not the street floor, but the one be above that is where uh, we sit, the telescope effect. And then the two floors above that is where the blockchain competence center actually has rented space from us. But now we are mostly interested right now also in the lower floor because that's where we have the DE Estonia showroom. And um, I was mentioning it earlier, we are very, very proud to say that we opened the first Estonian showroom in Germany 
in cooperation with Enterprise Estonia, of course, and, and having these ideas from the, the briefing center in Tallinn. Most of you know it. Uh, it's internationally known. It's well known here in Germany. Lots of companies travel there, get inspiration. And we decided that we would open a, a smaller version, of course, of the briefing center in Midweida. And also there, we were hoping to have uh, a big event last year already, but um, we couldn't do that due to the pandemic as well. So we did not want to wait any longer and timing couldn't be better. So we did open it last week in a very secluded round, but it was uh, very nice. And we are just finalizing our video and I will make sure that after the presentation and once the video, is online, I will share that with everyone so you can get your own impression from that little three minute clip. And um, we were even putting Estonian uh, like subtitles to it. So let's see how that turned out. I'm very excited to share that afterwards. So here that's uh, insight into our DE Estonia showroom. I I'm sure you, you understand the DE, the German, right? In, E Estonia showroom, the DE Estonia showroom, it's a little word game there. You see Ava Lorenzen from EAS and um, the actual briefing center right there. They were there in a, a live video call with us while we were opening. That was really great having them there. We are playing with the VR glasses, uh, which all of you know, and many of you know, maybe from the airport in Tallinn as well. And we do have the Digi Expo there which of course is, is very great to bring businesses together. So if I have a German delegation that visits us at the DE Estonia showroom, I can link them directly with the Estonian company through the touch screen and the buttons, bottoms there and the camera you see on top of the screen. And we just tried it last week and it works quite well. Nortal is one of our partners uh, in this DE Estonia showroom and they, um, get the chance as a partner, you get the chance to exhibit your technology as well. And so you see the little booth Nortel set up in that showroom. Just a couple of more impressions. Uh, I'm sure you see Tina right there uh, in the middle. Of course, um, the ambassador um, was there and uh, Mr. Aritz, you see him, the ambassador, Mr. Aritz up there on top, um, el elbowing each other and saying hi. And uh, the CEO of Nortal is right there in the background as well. So we did have, um, like I said, very selected people there, but uh, it, was, it was still a very nice event. So just to elaborate a little bit further on our history of Estonia. So, you know, maybe you think coming to Germany, it would be better to, to go to Berlin, for example. And I'm telling you it's not, because in Berlin, you're just one of the many that go to Berlin, for example, but in Medvida, you will be the one. So as Bernhard Schmidt, he was the one. He was doing his lenses for the telescope effect um, in 1903, actually, he started, and um, he was quite uh, successful with uh, these lenses, which were actually, I think, never patented, but yet they are used internationally. As mentioned earlier, we were doing various uh, Baltic learning journeys to get inspiration in 2017 and 18. In 2019, we did have the human conference. And when we said we were taking it further in March 2019, I, I would have not believed how fast everything went. We did sign an LOE that day with the Volksbank Midweida, the University of Applied Sciences, the city of Midweida, and the uh, former ambassador of Estonia, that we would promote this area, and that we did. We um, took a delegation trip with the State Ministry for uh, Economy, Work, and Traffic in April of 2019. In October 2019, we became, we uh, partially our team, not everyone, but a lot of people in our team became the residents to, to really understand more about this, this identification card and how easy life can be with this card. In October 2019, um, we opened our own office in uh, Ulemiste City in Bernhard Schmidt 
building and there you actually do see that lens. And that's a funny story. The guy who's smiling there holding that lens, he did bring that lens um, in his suitcase from Medvida to Tallinn because he actually works for the Volksbank and he happened to buy Gernot Schmidt's old house. And when he was doing work at the house, he found these lenses. In the beginning, he had no idea what it was. But then, of course, uh, <laughs> when, when this big picture came together, it was very, very cool that we actually did have these lenses. And one we gave to the University of Applied Sciences, and the other one is actually hanging in the Bernhard Schmidt House in Tallinn. In November 2019, we, uh, together with AHK, awarded the FinTech uh, Award of the Year. In January 2020, we represented it the first time at Tartu uh, Startup Days, which was very impressive. I was there on that stage, and it was quite the atmosphere. It was really a, a startup festival. It was wonderful. In December of 2020, we did a digital learning journey and matchmaking event in the fintech area. In March, Nortal became our first partner of the Werkbank 32 and the DES Estonia showroom and the, uh, I say the new ambassador, but he really isn't a new ambassador, but he hadn't been in Medvida before and really wanted to see with his own eyes what we were <laughs> bothering him with the whole time and telling him about. So he finally came and looked at it. And I think uh, he did enjoy what he was seeing. Yeah, and then last week we did open the DES Estonia showroom. So as you can see, long history, strong ties to Estonia, and also backed uh, with a very strong network. We, of course, promote Estonia from the German side. German companies can travel to uh, Tallinn with a learning journey to Estonia, and we do have various workshops. We offer um, yeah, the digitization giant Estonia experiences and perspectives live in the showroom, but also, of course, we do things digitally right now. Estonian companies interested in Germany beyond what Herr Lippert is offering and, and helping to, to acquire big grounds and property to set up factories and, and more. We can offer you that you can, you can start and you can utilize uh, the network and the Estonian bridge that we have built in Werkbank 32. We do have different um, options for you if you really fancy the idea of settling down with your business uh, in Germany, in Saxony, we will be there. There are different packages we can offer to you. We can talk about them. You can contact me and we can discuss them in more detail. We, of course, have various seminars, digital formats, local formats, hopefully more of these soon again. But we also do individual formats and focus mostly on banks, SMEs and startups. And the next digital event that we host in English will be on June 11th. And we will talk about the automotive market. Um, we have heard about a little bit now in this uh, yeah, presentation from my side, but also from Mr. Lippert's side. Yeah, and uh, I could go on and on, but I will stop and uh, we'll be very happy to take your questions. And uh, also after, of course, you can contact me. Thank you very much, Sonia. Uh, I'm I'm very pleased, uh, very happy about your presentation because if I'm thinking I'm living and working in Bavaria and fighting every day, uh, trying to uh, make connections between Estonian and German companies and still having a question, is the capital city of Estonia Riga? Uh, I think in Mitvaida you will be um, you find yourself as a, at home because the people know much about Estonia. And it's, it's like a small island where you can feel yourself welcome and not to, be, not to try to explain from the beginning everything. Thank you very much, Sonia, for that. Um, I have a question. So you, you, you presented already at the end uh, the, uh, which possibility the Estonian companies we would have when they contact you. But uh, do you agree that the most important thing new days is the ecosystem, exactly this network what you have already? Because you don't think anymore from business to business. I, you, you are not like uh, one plus nine, one, you are more. Do you agree with me? 
Of course, of course. And we have seen it again uh, last week, you know, when we did have the opening and how everybody is is playing together and how the connection continues growing, actually, and how ideas are developing. So, of course, there are so many aspects, you know, that um, we could introduce even like so we opened last week and then on Friday we had a very good call with your e-residency branch, actually thinking of what we could do in that field in Midvida. And one thing is really coming to the next. We're, we're open, we, we do wanna have joint formats. We're looking for Estonian companies that wanna come to us, that wanna give us a chance to help them settle down uh, in Midvida particularly and to grow the Estonian network even further. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Sonia. Uh, Henrik, thank you for your patience. You have waited so long, but uh, I really wanted to have you uh, on board as well, because you are now going to present like an example from real life. You didn't establish the company in Saxony, but in the neighbor state. And for the Estonians, it's like a middle of uh, Germany anyway, area, big area. But can you explain a little bit to us now about the Thermary and how you decided to uh, establish the GmbH in Germany and why? Yes, of course. Let's start by, I will start sharing my screen. I also I have a little presentation to show. Um, moment. I share the screen. So, do you all see the screen? Okay, so everybody sees the screen, we can continue. Um, welcome everybody, my name is Hendrik and I'm from Thermary. We already have the introductions made. Uh, who is Thermary then? We, yes, Thermary, we, we like to say that we are the global leader in modified timber for exteriors, interiors and sauna. And uh, when we say global leader, it means uh, that we are the largest thermally modified wood producer in the world by sales revenue. And we have more than 20 years of experience uh, in this modif thermal modification process and technology. Uh, what is this thermal modification? It's basically a process where you, we take timber, wood, and we, we put it into an oven. This oven uh, uh, is big and it's specially built for uh, for baking timber and we only use heat and steam to thermally modify the wood. And after that process, uh, what happens is that uh, the wood becomes more durable. It, it's ecological, it doesn't have any chemicals inside, but it becomes more durable and more stable in outside conditions to be used on terraces, to be used on facades and so on. And um, we have, uh, um, advanced technology, you can see this uh, oven on the right. These ovens look like these big metal ovens and with uh, systems and they normally treat, let's say one truckload of, of timber at a time and they run 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, and we have a lot of these ovens which we produce the procedure in. We have eight factories and uh, three sawmills in the group. some key facts more about uh, what happened in the past with us. So 2018, around the time when I also joined Thermary, um, we had a merger of two leading producers, Thermary and Haserv. And both of these producers were uh, already selling uh, actively goods to the German market back then. Um, then 2019, we bought a company in Finland, which is called Sipparilla. Uh, that's another production company from Finland. And we, we consolidated this all under the name of Thermory. So uh, the historical name Thermory came from here, from Tallinn, very close to uh, Ulemiste city as well, where we have the uh, showroom of uh, Telescope Effect and uh, this corporation. And we have our showroom uh, about, I would say 100 or 200 meters away from you guys. In another building, we have the Thermary showroom. So in the background, the picture you see is the showroom of Thermary. You're all welcome once it's possible. It takes 10 minutes to walk from the airport to our showroom, to pop by and see all the beautiful products we do. 
And then in 2020, our turnover uh, became around 110 million euros. And in 2020, December, we founded Thermoi Deutschland. So this was last end of last year. We have together with me here in this call also Christian Pongratz uh, from Thermoi Deutschland. He's the head of, of our German team. Uh, the Gesellschaftsführer, or how to say it correctly in, in Deutsch, uh, of, of our, our German operation. Uh, we export to 50 countries worldwide. Um, key markets for us uh, is Finland, USA, Germany, Sweden, France, and the Benelux area. And um, I don't know wh whom to you this says anything, but in the timber world, we always speak about cubic meters. So the cubic meters we, we consume or we need to produce our products is uh, 160,000 cubic meters of wood. Uh, we have 750 employees in the group and um, we are of course very keen on using all these uh, quality standards and certifications to make, make Thermary uh, more green uh, and more uh, innovative in the way that we do our products. Um, a quick look to the uh, Thermary Group Companies Tree, uh, how it how it looks like. So we, we have also, I would now focus in this presentation mainly on the sales units. And the sales units we have is Thermary USA. We have uh, our own daughter company in the United States, and now the second daughter company we established is in in, in Germany. So uh, I would. I would uh, put it in other words into this that we, we normally have followed the strategy that we build up the business first in a certain uh, place or a market and then when we see it's uh, already big enough and interesting enough then we want to open our own sales unit in that country to be properly presented and to be more more there um, so these are our brands if we look into the brands um, just so you, when you ever see them, you, you know, uh, we have Thermary. This stands for these cladding products, which are thermally modified, and decking products, which are thermally modified. So cladding, which is going on the, on the wall, and decking, which goes on the balcony. Um, and then we have also sauna materials in products, so a lot of uh, wellness products. So if you want to ever build a sauna, you can also remember we have all the products you need for building a sauna. Um, then we have Siparilla brand, which is standing out for uh, Nordic, uh, this Finnish product production units we have in Finland. And they are doing uh, not thermally modified, but just normal spruce pine uh, products, which are planed and painted. So we have for inside interior claddings, which are made by the designers and architects in Finland. For example, Risto Mati Radia is a famous architect uh, or this kind of designer name, not an architect, sorry, designed by Radia. He, his uh, products, for example, we have uh, made together with him um, an inside cladding, which is called uh, Mira. And you see that in the central picture there in this bedroom on the wall, this cladding, it's made by our production. And then we have our room where we make the ready-made design saunas for outside and inside. So you get uh, a prefabricated sauna and an installer will come and, and build this up in your garden or in your uh, living room or wherever you want to have it. Also, uh, of course, together with big spas and hotels, we, we make uh, these bigger tailor-made uh, solutions. We have made also a lot of projects in Germany. So, um, is heat and steam. You can remember this when you when you hear the name thermary, it means the heat alters the wood, enhancing it completely, and the steam gives us complete control over the process. So these are the two things we use to modify our wood. Nothing else is done to the natural product. So and the benefits come then to have this rot resistance. Uh, it becomes more rot resistant through time. It has exceptional durability thanks to this treatment and it stands up to moisture better after this treatment. Um, what do we also like to say a lot is, you know, we want to be 
an environmentally friendly alternative to tropical wood. And uh, this is what we say, honestly, that all of the materials we are sourcing come from the Nordic hemisphere. So all the wood that Thermary is using is only from these boreal forests, which are regenerating, meaning that um, in the tropics, you have this problem that when they cut off the forest, it's very hard to regenerate this ecosystem. In, in the northern uh, hemisphere, it's much easier to reproduce the forest uh, if you manage it environmentally and in a friendly way. And of course, uh, plastic composite materials, which has become a, a big trend in the world, where uh, my question is, of course, always then that should we really produce plastic uh, deckings or plastic facades. Uh, for, for me, at least, this doesn't seem a natural way for us in the future as mankind. So we don't do any plastic composite materials. We only do real wood products. Now, about Thermary Deutschland. I told you enough about Thermary. Let's go to the Thermary Deutschland side. Um, the question comes, why? Why do we need Thermary Deutschland? So for us as Thermary, we really uh, we want to make a difference. That's our mission. And we want to unite like-minded people and our employees, customers and partners who feel in their hearts that real wood is the best building material uh, that will have significant, significant positive impact on living environment on the planet Earth, aesthetically, functionally and sustainably. So this is what, what we believe in and this is what we stand for. And um, we, we found um, Germany and, and especially the German speaking area always a very important area for us as a producer here from Estonia and Finland. And we needed to become more close to the market because when we were selling our products in the last 20 years to Germany, we were we are still mostly unknown on the market. So we, we are used uh, by uh, other German companies, let's say, as, as, as a, a white label supplier. And uh, this is what we want to change. So we want to bring more the brand awareness and the knowledge about our, our production to the market. And to do that, we needed to start up our cooperation with Christian here uh, in the call and, and start up bringing Germany uh, to Thermary, the, the visibility of us. So how did we establish the company? Uh, you know, for us, uh, us, it was quite simple in, in terms of um, the fact that we had this history. So we had, uh, we had a history of, of selling to the market and we knew some people already uh, throughout the years as a, as a group and we had joined uh, uh, also different fairs. Now, if I would have to give advice to people who want to go from uh, zero today, then uh, for example, as uh, Sonia was telling, this would be a perfect way to start. You, you, you should contact Sonia and ask who to contact. But for us, we had um, some uh, contact with uh, Mr. Christian Pongratz, for example, uh, in the same business field from before. And when we found out that uh, that Christian was uh, Christian and his team was uh, available for new challenges, uh, that was the moment when we, we took the brave decision and started to quickly react on it and, and made some changes uh, to to start up with the business. Now. Um, Creating the company in Germany now it comes more to the technical side. How did we do it? So to share our experience or story. So how did we do the GmbH? Um, on German side, big thanks to Mr. Christian Pongratz and his team. And on Estonian side, uh, I would say we, we, we used a lot of uh, help from our financial department lead by Mr. Martin Kalle. They were the two main uh, technical sides. And we had also a lot of help from uh, um, Tina from Tina. Thank you, Tina. Uh, since we changed some information also about, you know, trying to understand what kind of location is it actually and, and, and how to do it and so on. So we had some uh, special talks with AIS and we always had good contact with uh, AIS through the past. So Enterprise Estonia is very important for us here in Estonia. Thank you. Um, and um, thanks to COVID, I must say, actually, in a way, because COVID changed my life completely. 
For the last seven years, I've been an export sales manager, traveling around the planet all the time, usually two, two weeks in a month, I was always on the road. And then when my second child was born in the 1st of January last year, uh, she's, her name is Emma, uh, COVID came like two, three months later. And for me, as a, as a parent for two small children, it was an, actually an interesting uh, experience since I was pushed back to be more at home and I can now enjoy my children growing up more and not to fly around so much. But uh, what I also want to say is thanks to COVID and the good work of our team, the permits to establish the company were all done without travel for us. So uh, we had Christian on one side and then we had the legal advice and we made, um, we made all the permits uh, online. So we could establish the company uh, with the help of uh, Christian uh, without any need to travel to Germany just to stamp, stamp or sign papers which was, of course, positive for us. Um, if anybody has any questions more about how did we create the company in Germany, please, you're welcome to ask them in the chat and I will try to answer them in the future. Now, uh, location, we are in saxony anhalt Germany, and um, for us was uh, the people first mentality there also, which led the way, and it was Christian's uh, team that is from this uh, district originally. Uh, so we had uh, already ready people from the industry who, uh, who came uh, to our team. And we also had actually logistically a, a good spot for us because uh, we distribute our products across Germany. And we, we find that uh, this, this location was good for our business model. And we have also very good possibilities in this area to expand our business. So, so we have quite a stock stock uh, surface needing a business we, we need to stock our products and uh, they take a lot of space so we need stock uh, area and in this area we have possibilities to expand the stock quite easily um, and the challenges which we had so far in the last six months with christian of course uh, we have them daily and weekly all kinds of things which we need to do uh, to make the communication work fast but the main thing we I would say maybe it's, uh, today for our industry is keeping the demand and supply in balance because um, due to COVID, um, actually all of the world stopped and people are at home. So what do people do at home? They are investing into wellness. So they are building saunas. They are thinking of renovating their uh, inside rooms. So they are uh, buying uh, inside cladding and they are also Maybe some of them are building their facade around. So that's exterior cladding. It's basically, and then we have decking. So they are changing their decking for barbecuing and for wellness at home or building a, a, a balcony. So in the end, we actually reached um, our industry in general on the planet. Uh, maybe some of you has heard that the timber prices have really gone up in the last, last year. So they basically doubled and they're going to continue on rise. So we don't actually have enough of supply. So we need to um, uh, produce more. And that's what we are doing. We are uh, doubling our production this year. So we invested into uh, a lot of millions of euros into, into our production lines and we are building uh, new, new thermo ovens in Thailand and into Finland, which by the end of this year will double our capacity. So we were the biggest by sales revenue in this industry. Um, the year before and we will then for sure continue on the same track. Um, what we also uh, of course find as a challenge is introducing new products to the German market especially because Germany is a very traditional country. I was myself 22 years old in the first moment when I went to visit uh, customers in Germany for selling wood and I still remember uh, this was eight years ago uh, how difficult it actually was to try to uh, show and explain on site to the German uh, uh, Holz uh, buyers, the wood buyers, uh, what kind of products we have and how we could innovate this industry of wood, because the wood industry especially is really traditional, of course. So that's really been a challenge, especially even for us to, to handle from far away. And this is why we really are happy that we have an office now in Germany so we can take the products to the market in the way that German culture and people want to see 
and are expecting us to show them. So it's not enough for me to come there once in once in two or three months and to visit all the customers and to talk to them, have their yearly meetings. We need more uh, more people to help us with that, and that's why we have Memory Deutschland for sure. And then the last one, raising our brand and product awareness so to the market. So the area is big. There's a lot of people living there. And today it's really difficult to make the right, let's say, decisions on how to promote your brand. Uh, because uh, you can spend endless amounts of money into uh, marketing. Just the question is how to target. So we are really... Um, doing, in my opinion, a, a good job there. We have our marketing department who's made the brand strategy and, and we have targeted specifically uh, mostly the architects, designers, and uh, also uh, builders. And then uh, we want to show them our products and our brand. And this hopefully will bring back good results. Let's see, you can ask us in a year, me and Christian, how we have done. So uh, that's, uh, that's about it, actually. That was the last slide, so thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Hendrik, very much. Uh, so my conclusion would be that we all need to find our, uh, all the Estonian companies need one Mr. Christian Bongatz to right. succeed in German markets, right? When we speak about at least our industry, which is uh, which is this wood industry, then I would say uh, I support this idea, especially when you make a high end uh, finished products, which go really to the end. When you are selling just uh, something for the industry that they need for production, producing something else in the end, then maybe it's not so important, but especially when you want to bring your brand to the market. Thank you. And uh, Christian, I know you are from Bavaria, yes. as, as means. <laughs> so I, uh, my first suggestion was to Thermory to create in Bavaria, of course. But uh, after a longer discussion, I do deep understood why you, you choose the other state. So it's totally understandable. But it's a very difficult question for the companies, where to start and with whom to start. And therefore, personal contacts, I guess, they are the most important. Maybe, maybe in a few years we need another one or a subsidiary in the southern part to supply uh, Switzerland and Austria better. But for the start, I think that was was the better uh, spot and, and uh, a good decision to start in Saxony. Anhalt. Yeah, you started in the middle of the pandemic time, so it was good for Hendrik. But how it was for you? Because it's the, you started half a year ago. And where are you right now then? How, what's your feeling are, feelings are? I mean, the construction was never really affected, really. You know, if you look, look at the job sites, everything continued like before. Um, uh, but now, you know, as uh, it, it, it picked up so heavily that uh, uh, we are lacking supply now in materials uh, and, and everyone in the, in the sales or the wholesalers are really struggling and they can't really supply their clients uh, properly. So what we are facing now is a, a different situation to last year. So we need to uh, basically uh, change our strategy a little bit to, and, and target different uh, uh, prospects as we are, have been planning earlier. But that's uh, something, you know, if you start something, you're still quite flexible and, and it's not really a, a it's, it's still a big challenge, but it's not a problem in the end. You know, we're um, not new in, the, in, in, the, in this industry and Thermory is well known as, uh, as a high-end quality producer, that's for sure. But uh, if you go out, uh, you know, if you're talking with our architects or installers or um, private, you know, homeowners, they, they don't really know the brand. It's just a big, companies who are dealing with wood, they know Thermary, of course. So that's something we have to improve. Uh, brand awareness is something which is really important. But it's uh, really happy. Uh, what I wanted to say as well is um, the Estonian team is, is, is great. You know, their the decisions have been 
done really fast. Communication is working well. It's it's all digital, and uh, we we can learn a lot from our from the Estonian part uh, because uh, because um, you know it's 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 uh, it's something which they know probably a little bit better than us, uh, and and it's it's really I, it's more smart companies which you can find there. And it was really interesting for for us to to uh, get to know this and. Um, uh, we have, I think uh, they have really uh, successful years ahead of us, especially as, as uh, Thermary is investing a lot in, in production capacity. So uh, after this pandemic will slow down a little bit, we will be really uh, perfectly set up here in Germany as well. Thank you, Mr. Pongratz. Unfortunately, our time is running out. I don't know where it uh, disappeared. It just... <laughs> going by and it was interesting for me to listen uh, but I would like to conclude with, uh, with uh, some thoughts in this webinar that I see more joint forces uh, Estonians and Saxony or mid-German mid, uh, companies they have so many similarities but over, overall I would say that the Germans and the Estonians have so many similarities and otherwise I would not live and function here in Bavaria. So I feel myself very well, and I can see that this combination Estonian and German uh, as a joint forces could have benefits from both sides. We can learn as well uh, much from the Germans and vice versa digitalization, we Germans can learn from us, but everybody needs uh, to find their own ways. And that, that's absolutely important, but to do it alone at home, it doesn't uh, count so much. You have to discuss it. You have to drop the line. You have to meet people. As we now all, all are all digital and we can have this webinar. So I hope that the companies who are listening to uh, us today, they will drop immediately line, either Sonia or Andreas or Hendrik or Christian or me and ask the questions and we will promise we will match make you with the right people and right companies. So. Thank you very much from my side and I hope you had a nice uh, day and we will send you afterwards, of course, the presentations and the, uh, this webinar was also recorded, so the recorded version will come also to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Greetings to Estonia. Thank you. Bye. Bye.